Hey guys, it's May May, and I know that it is August 1st, but I really, really want to do another Christmas project. So I'm going to finish out this little week of Christmas in July doing one more little project out of this book. This is the Big Book of Holiday Paper Crafts, and um, I know a lot of you picked it up this week, and so I thought I would just do one more at least. And it will come back. Don't worry, we'll be doing more stuff out of it because I love this book anyway. But tonight we're going to do this. And again, it's another one of those, mm, it's just a card, but it's not. I was looking at it and there was this line that goes over to this circle and in this circle it shows that it's like a policy envelope. Now here's what's interesting. They make it themselves and so I was trying to find in the book where there would be like a template or something but it doesn't say there is one. It just says use the template. Well there's not a template. So what I'm going to do is make one for us and show you how I would make it just using some cardstock. So we're going to be doing this little um, decorated envelope that would be good to put a gift card or something in. Now the finished size is going to be the size of an A2 size card. I thought I would do it that way with my template because I think it'll be easier for you to kind of picture what size it's going to be in the end. So when we finish it'll be an A2 size. So let's get started. Okay so first things first I've picked out this piece of paper I really like and it has this little red border on the edge. This is a 12 by 12 piece of paper but for what we're going to make I'm going to cut it down to 10 by 10 and I think that'll make it a lot easier for what we're going to do. And I'm going to leave this little border edge on the paper because I want that to be on my envelope flap that folds down. So I'm going to cut it 10 by 10 on this side and then at the bottom. So let's do that first. Alright, so I have the big scoreboard over and I've cut this piece down to 10 by 10. And now we're going to do our scoring. Alright, I want my um, envelope to be 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half in the center. That's the size I want it to be. So I'm going to come in first. Now this is important. One of your flaps has to be wider than the other side so that they can overlap and you can glue them down. So that being said, the first thing I'm going to do is score at three inches all the way down the page. This is going to be the flap of my envelope, so I'm going to score down the page at three inches. Then I'm going to move over from this three inch mark four and one quarter inches. That's going to put me at seven and a quarter. Why am I doing that? Because that's how wide my envelope is going to be, four and a quarter. So we've got one inch, two, three, four and a quarter makes us seven and one quarter inches. So I'm going to stop here and go back and explain. This first three inches is the flap that wraps around. This second space is my four and one quarter inch shape envelope. And this last portion is going to be two and three quarter inches. So this one is my wide side. This is my narrow side. And when they flap over, they'll have enough to put adhesive on. It'll all make sense as we get going. Now I'm going to turn this. Okay, so now we're going to score the flap that's going to fold over. I'm going to score it at two and a half inches so I can have a pretty good sized little flap to come down. Now I'm going to move down from two and a half and I'm going to go five and a half inches down. The reason is I want my finished card to be four and a quarter wide, which we've already scored, and five and a half tall. So in order to do that, I'm at two and a half inches. I'm going to go from two and a half to three. So there's my half an inch. And now I just need to count five inches. One, two, three, four, five. And I will score it at eight. All right, so I told you all of that to tell you how I made the template. But what I want to do right now is go back to the beginning and say this. This is your 10 by 10 piece of paper. Your first score line is 3 inches. Your next score line is 7 and a quarter. You're going to turn it so that your flap is on one side. And now you're going to score it at 2 inches and at 7 and a half inches. Okay? So I just wanted to give you the actual score dimensions since I showed you how I got there. And then that way, if you're not interested in doing the math yourself, that's where you do the scoring, okay? So now, let's move on. That might have been slightly confusing, but the whole point was I wanted to show you how I got to the template in case you wanted to do that with a different size. And I wanted to show you, if you just want to do this, there's the simple dimensions. All right, now we got to do some cutting. And before I do that, I'm going to darken these lines so you can see what I'm doing. Just because they're scored doesn't mean you can see them. So this is not a step you need to do to make this project. This is just me wanting you to be able to see the lines. They're going to be on the inside, so they're not going to show. But I really want you to be able to see it here. Okay, so now you can see the shape, right? This is the flat portion of our envelope. These are the flaps that are going to fold over. So we can get rid of all four of these flaps. Okay, so we're going to cut these totally away. 
on the score lines. That's what we did that for. So you want to cut them on your score line. So now you see I've cut the corners away. And I want to show you this. This is the flap that is two and three fourths. This is the flap that is three inches. The reason for that is when we fold them over the middle, we've got to have a flap to put adhesive down. So that should be making sense now. But before we do that, I want to do some prep to this guy. Now, if I were to try to fold these straight over and then fold these flaps down, this is going to be a little bulky here where these two are going to overlap. So we're going to do one thing to correct that. What I'm going to do is basically bevel this edge. So I'm just going to come out here, just kind of eyeball from one edge to the other and cut at an angle. What that does is it will take away some of the bulk. I want to show you what I cut. It's going to take away some of that bulk right here in the middle. If you ever had a policy envelope, you'll probably notice that they're cut that way too. So just come out here, just eyeball one of the edges and go to your center or go to your score line and cut that away. This one's not quite as deep, but it's not going to matter. You'll see that. Now do the same thing down here because you'll get a much better fold. And that's just going to take some bulk away. Now what I want to do is flip this guy over and at the top I'm going to use my corner chopper and I'm going to round these corners at the top. And also the bottom. All right, so can you see these? this is our envelope bo top flap and bottom flap, and now I want to ink all of the edges because I want them to show. So before I fold, I'm going to go ahead and ink all the way around the outside. Okay, so now it's time to fold. So I'm going to take the two and three quarter side, which is my shorter side, and fold it in and then burnish it down like so. Then I'm going to take my three inch side, which is my longer side, and fold it over like so. Now you can see that they flap over by an inch. So if you want to change those dimensions, you certainly can. If you wanted to maybe make your page nine and a half by nine and a half and just take some of this out of here, that's perfectly fine. But just remember you'll have to change all of your dimensions. To be honest, you'd probably just want to take one, some of that in from one side and not the other because um, you want your height to stay the same. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to adhere these together to each other, and I want to show you how I'm going to do that. Working from the top, I'm going to run some adhesive down the edge of one flap, okay? And then working from the bottom side, I'm going to run the adhesive down the edge of the other flap, and I will show you why. When you fold this one over, your adhesive is up top, and when you fold this one over, your adhesive is down bottom. And that way, they will stick together on both sides, okay? Now you can fold these and you should clear with, with no bulk because we cut that away. And fold this guy. Alright, for this part you can go ahead and stick this down, no problem. Just going to use some adhesive. Alright, we're not going to tape anything here because we're going to do something fun to close this guy up. But now we need to decorate the front. And I want to show you, see now we have the size of an A2 size card. Now, for my decorations on the front page, I'm going to use something from this little piece. I love this right here. I'm going to cut this out real quick. So now I've cut that little piece away, which I just love that little piece. And I want to mat it with some gray, just because I think that'll be cute and different. So what I'm going to do is measure this piece. So it's three by four, this piece is. So I'm going to cut this to be three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay, so now I'll be able to mat these and have a little bit of a border showing. See the little gray border? And then this will be mounted crooked on here. I think they go this way. Which way did they go? Okay, they go this way. But you, got, you guys know by now I'm kind of loosely translating what they do, right? <laughs> so this will lay this way. Now if you wanted to, you could put another mat here, but I really like this green hound's tooth showing, so I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is he adhere these two together. Oh, not first. Stop. I want to ink everything. I love the way the ink looks on these. So I'm going to now adhere this to the matte piece I did for it. Just straight on there like so. And then I'm going to bring this around, and I think I'm going to do this on dimension. Okay, so now that I've got this... Um, stuck down to the mat. I want to do one other thing. I want to run a little bow up here. They have a bow on theirs too and I think it's super cute so I'm going to do that. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is poke a couple of holes and I'm just going to kind of eyeball them because that's what I do, right? A distance apart from each other. Something like that. That's not too bad. So I have this black and white gingham ribbon that I think is going to be so cute. This is actually what we used on the wedding invitations for Jared and Sam. So I'm cutting the piece to a point so that I can feed it through. Don't worry if that frays a little bit. You can always trim that off after you get it done. But cut a sharp point in your ribbon to feed it through those holes. That way you don't have to fuss too much with it. Okay. So I've got that through. And I'm going to tie a bow. And trim this away. I like that little bow. That's cute. Now I'm going to put it on dimension. So I'm going to use some foam tape and I'm going to put some here. I'm not going to put it up real high. I'm just going to put it up one thickness of this really thin foam tape I have. Okay. Now I'm going to place it onto the envelope in the front. Just like this. This is really cute, huh? I flattened my bow the way I did it. Okay, so there's the front side of it, but now we need to put those buttons here and the ribbon and the uh, baker's twine to make this close like a policy envelope. So let me get those out. So I just picked out a couple of buttons, whatever ones you want. They don't have to match each other. It's just for fun. I'll flip these guys over and put a dimensional square on them. These are just little sticky doos and they are, have dimension. So now I'm going to put this in the center back here. Just get that in the center as good as you can. Okay, and then this guy. He needs to go underneath the flap on this page. Like so. Okay, now we need some baker's twine. Now I have this string of red that's kind of a scrap left over in my um, baker's twine storage and I'm going to take this and wrap it around that dimensional and I'm going to tie it in a knot but I'm not going to squeeze so hard that I mess up the dimensional I'm just going to squeeze it enough to get a good knot going just like that and then I'm going to cut this short piece away that I don't need and now then when you put your gift in it you're going to wrap this around the bottom around the top and you might want to do it a couple times on the bottom and then cut your string away so you know that whoever you give it to will have plenty of string to unravel. See how that works? Like in a figure eight? And it stays shut. Super cute. Wasn't that easy? I think it was so easy. So you end up with this that you can put a precious gift in. You could put a gift card. You could put a, if you made this like a quarter of an inch bigger, you could actually put a card, an A2 card in it. But this way, you have a great way to send a gift or hand a gift to somebody. And you can still close it up in the back. I just love this little guy. I think it's super cute. I know it looks a lot different than theirs, but I really like how it looks. So now I have theirs in the picture, and you can see how different it looks, right? I did, I don't know. I loosely took this, so loosely translated, this is what you get. But if you look at this, the front and the back is very similar to what we did. So we have our little policy envelope, and I just think it's super cute. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's going to be the last one for a little while. We're going to move away from Christmas for a little while. We're going to go to some other stuff. Um, I promised you guys a final flip through of the mini album. That's coming. And um, a couple other things are coming up. So there you go. I hope you enjoy this book. All you guys that got it, let me know what you're thinking about it. And if you have questions about it, let me know. Maybe there's some way I can help you with it. Um, all right, guys. Have a great weekend, and I will see you guys on Monday. Bye-bye.